If you've ever worked with any text data, you probably know how dirty and sloppy it can be sometimes, especially if you're working with text data from social media platforms like Twitter, Facebook, etc. And this is one of the reasons why we cannot give just raw data to our machine learning or deep learning model. By cleaning your text, you will actually reduce the vocabulary size and also memory usage by your model and let your model understand more parts or words of the text that you're giving it. So in general, it is really important to clean your text, but you have to be careful because if you do it wrong, you'll get so much worse results that you may even think uh, that cleaning was a total waste of time and you shouldn't have done it. So in general, in this tutorial, we'll be looking at text cleaning and its most essential techniques and tools. But before we get started, let me tell you that you can read all the instructions and also implementation of the code on my Medium article and also make sure to hit that like and subscribe button for more videos. Okay, so let's get to it. The first thing that we have to keep in mind for text cleaning is that it is very task specific. It means that when you want to clean your text, you have to keep in mind the goal that you want to accomplish or the thing that you want to eventually do. For example, text cleaning for text classification is so much more different from text cleaning for generating a language model. As Thomas Mikhailov, one of the developers of Vortuvec, tells us, there's no universal or fixed answer to how you should clean the text. But we clean our text in order to reduce the size of our vocabulary and also the memory usage. But the most important thing is that you experiment with your text. Use different tools and also techniques in order to see which one gives you the best result. And also keep in mind that when you have a deep learning model that can learn about different words with word embeddings, you can do as little cleaning as possible. But even that little part will probably have a big impact on your results. So let's start by seeing what steps we can take for cleaning our text. The seven most important steps are actually substituting emojis, removing URLs or different links, tokenizing the text, removing stop words, removing punctuations, and then lower casing, and at the end, lemmatization or stemming. Here, we'll first talk about them briefly and say what each one means, and then see how we can implement them in code. We start with substituting emojis. Uh, there are a lot of different ways in which punctuations can come together and form different shapes. I'm sure you've seen things like emoticons that are representations of facial expressions. Some examples are a colon with a closing parenthesis showing a happy face and also a colon with an opening parenthesis showing a sad face. Because we want to save all these emotions, which can be an important part of the meaning of our text, we substitute them all with the correct expression name. Like we give the happy face the name of happy or the angry face the name of sad. And we do this by using a very simple regex substitution command. And what this command actually does is that it searches all the text and then substitutes whatever text that is in this format. Well, next we go on and remove URLs. Well, if you look at your data and find that you have a lot of links in the middle of your text, it's usually a great thing to clean them all up because they aren't conveying any special meaning and maybe not adding any more information to our sentences. And because they all have a certain format, you can easily detect and remove them by, again, substituting whatever has this kind of format. Here, as an example, we can see that text from Twitter usually has this type of link that is a link that references Twitter itself. And the format of these texts are usually HTTP or HTTPs in the beginning and then double slash and t.co and then 
however many capitalized or lowercase word and also number that comes at the end. The next step is tokenization. We tokenize or split sentences into words because machine or deep learning models cannot take sentences and just read them like we do. Uh, we can approach this task with only using a basic command like dot .split and split our text by white space. Let's take this sentence, for example, and split it by white space. Well, here, because there's no space between Smith and the exclamation mark, we'll have something like this. Uh, that is not really what we want, right? So we have to use some package or something that can understand and distinguish between different punctuations. For this, we have packages like word tokenize from NLTK that are actually some algorithms and models that were trained on large text corpuses and can understand whether or not a punctuation has to be separated from the text that is around it. And keep in mind that there are a lot of different packages that tokenize the text for you, like Spacey. But language models like BERT also have their own tokenizer based on their own vocabulary. But here, as a general example, we used NLTK. Next, we remove stop words. Well, stop words are actually commonly used words like he, she, it, an, in, and etc. These are words that are used in every type of sentences and won't give us any specific information. Uh, they're so poor and useless that are even ignored by search engines like Google, uh, both when indexing entries for searching and when retrieving them as a result of a search. Well, for removing them, we can use packages like Spacey and NLTK, but I personally find NLTK more useful as it has about half as many stop words in its vocabulary and will therefore remove less parts of your text. Then after using NLTK, you can go and experiment with other packages like Spacey, which has around 300 stop words, and then experiment and see what they do to your text. Next, we'll delete punctuations. I know you may think that punctuations play an important role uh, in, for example, the intensity of a sentence, emotion, but in practice, this is usually not the case. And when you read different tutorials or kernels, you'll see that punctuation removal is one of the main steps that they take before giving their data to their model. And this is true, firstly, because we have, for example, exclamation marks in both positive and negative sentences. Secondly, there are simply too many punctuation marks and the benefits of reducing your vocabulary size and also deleting different punctuations is usually so much more than what you can get from their presence. So for this task, we can use make trans function to create a mapping table. And what we mean by that and what we do here is that we create an empty mapping table, but we set the third argument of this function to be a list of punctuations. Uh, this actually allows us to list all of the characters to remove during the translation process. Okay, well, the next step is lower casing. In this step, you have to pay attention at what you are sacrificing with lower casing. So take Bush, for example. Here, you intend to talk about President Bush, but when you lowercase it, it actually changes into Bush with a small b. That means a totally different thing. But in other words, like another, here, there, actually lowercasing the first word won't make any difference. So here we can see the power and importance of experimentation. You have to implement it for yourself and see whether or not lowercasing brings you any benefit or it just costs you more than it gives. So at the end, we have lemmatization and stemming. Well, the goal of both of them is to relate forms of verbs, nouns, etc. Uh, to their main and base form. But each of them does this differently. Take the verb studies, for example. If we give it to a stemmer, it will give a study with I at the end. 
But if we give it to a lemmatizer, it will return study with a y that is the base and infinitive form of our verb. So you can easily see that this stemmer actually chops off the end of the words that we give it. And then we hope that we get a simple and correct base form of the word. But lemmatization actually usually is referred to doing things properly with the use of a vocabulary or a dictionary. So we can hope for a much more meaningful sentence after we give our sentence to a lemmatizer than when we give it to a stemmer. But in general, remember that this step is not very much necessary and crucial to a great text pre-processing as it reduces the variety in your data. But if you still want to experiment with one, I'd really recommend using lemmatization because it can give you the standard formats instead of some chopped up words. So now I just want to quickly show you how you should be careful when you're cleaning. Let's assume that we have such sentence. Don't worry, Rocket is not dead. And Rocket is, for example, the name of a dog. So let's assume that we actually clean all the punctuations before substituting the emojis. What we'll end up with is, don't worry, Rocket is not dead. Well, it seems okay right now, right? But next step, we decide to remove all the stop words. So we delete don't and also is not. So what you'll end up with will be worry rocket dead. Well, it's getting a little bit creepy, right? But you don't stop here. You go ahead and lowercase all the words in your sentences. And then here, for example, rocket that used to be a dog's name is now a totally different word. If you were doing text classification, even with a very simple deep learning model, it would probably find this one a very disastrous news. So be careful before you go on and do whatever you do with your text. Be careful not to delete too much and always experiment with your text. You can do it with a simple if or else statement to see how having one package or tool, for example, improves or worsens your result. So yeah, that was it for this week's NLP tutorial. I hope this video was useful and helpful to you uh, and you got something out of it. And if you did, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Also ask your questions in the comments section down below or on Medium, Telegram, Instagram, whichever you prefer. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in another tutorial.